past few years, there's been a really common question that guitar players have been asking on forums and Facebook groups, my Instagram page, and that is Kemper or Helix. Which is better? Which one should I buy? Now, the reality is, personally, I haven't really felt comfortable making the comparison because I always looked at the Kemper and the Helix as two fundamentally different products for different guitar players. Yes, they're both digital rigs. Yes, they're both designed to be an all-in-one solution that you can take to any gig or studio session. Now, in my mind, that's where the similarities ended, and I felt like they were more different than they were alike until recently. Kemper just released the Ke Helix Kemper. This is going to be a tough video to get through. <laughs> Kemper just released the Kemper Stage, which is obviously them taking a swing at Line 6 and the Helix and Helix LT. And now the differences aren't so apparent. In fact, if you look at them side by side, they're really not that different at all. So now this really bears the question, Kemper or Helix, which one's better, which one should you buy? So in today's video, we're gonna take a look at both of these units next to each other, compare them, talk about the pros and cons, what they're good at, what they're not good at, and then I'm gonna tell you which one I would buy if I could only have one. So let's take a look at the Kemper stage because it's the new kid on the block. Despite what you might be thinking, it really is just a repackaged Kemper toaster or rack. They took the traditional profiler and the profiler and the profiler remote, which is what you needed if you were gonna use your Kemper Live, and they put them together essentially in the same box. Now, there are some slight differences in that you don't have as many external controls on the stage as you do on the toaster or the rack, so you don't have a dedicated knob for your noise gate and some other things like that that are buried in some menus, but for all intents and purposes, it's just a Kemper on the floor. You still have a profiling function, you still have the same performance mode, you have the same looper, the same tuner, the same effects, and as long as you're using the same profiles, the stage sounds identical to the traditional profiler, despite what some people think online. Now, I was really excited to see the stage when they announced it a few weeks ago because it solves one of the fundamental problems that the Kemper had, in my opinion, which was in order to effectively use the Kemper live, you had to have the actual profiler unit yourself. You had to have the floor remote, which was an extra $500, and you had to have the special cat 5 cable that connected the remote to the profiler and that's also one of the reasons i haven't used my kemper live very much because it's patched in to my rack back here i've got it all set up with the patch bay in my studio and every time i go out live i don't want to have to pull it out of the rack unpatch everything put it in its case and make sure i don't forget the remote and the cable, which I have done before, showed up to the gig without the cable and essentially was SOL. Now, if you've been around this channel for a while, you know that I've been using both a Kemper and a Helix for quite some time. I've owned my Kemper for the past five or six years, and I've had a Helix for the last eight or nine months, but in that time, I've used it live quite a bit. So I've got a pretty good feel for both of these units and their strengths and weaknesses. Now, one thing I don't want to do in this video is attempt a direct head-to-head -head sound comparison. So a Kemper AC30 versus a Helix AC30, because quite frankly, I don't think that kind of comparison is that valid because these are still fundamentally different pieces of gear. See, the Helix is a straight-ahead modeling amp. Now, a lot of people hear that word and they cringe because modelers of the past, even from line six, weren't all that great. But in my opinion, the stuff that the Helix does is insanely good. I like the amp models that line six has put in there. They require some tweaking out of the box, but if you have a good fundamental understanding of how real amps work in the real world, you can absolutely make a Helix sound great. And if you don't know how to do that, you can just download some presets that are already made. Shameless plug. But the Kemper works on a fundamentally different level. It's not a modeler. The whole idea behind the Kemper is to take your own amps, your own sounds, the stuff that you are used to playing, 
profiling them and then taking those sounds out on the road or to your local jam or to a studio session. Now it gets a little more complicated than that because quite frankly, the profiling process is not actually all that easy. Kemper sells it as something as easy as just sticking a mic in front of an amp and hitting the profile button and you've nailed it. But the reality is you actually need to have a good signal chain, a good mic selection, and a good fundamental understanding of audio engineering and how to mic up amps in a studio setting. And that's the thing about the Kemper. It's only as good as the profiles you're using. But that's actually one of the things I really like about the Kemper compared to the Helix. See, the Helix is a modeler. It's a really good one, but still it's a modeler, which means that you are stuck with the amp models that Line 6 gives you from the factory. Now, there's a caveat to this. Whenever they do big updates like they just did going to 2.8, they're really good about adding new amp models and new effect models, which we'll get to in a minute. But the thing with the Kemper that's brilliant is if you have an amp to profile, no matter how boutique or how obscure, and you know how to profile well, you can have that amp in your Kemper. I've even done it myself with my 64 Skylark, my 68 Gibson Hawk, both of which are really cool amps that quite frankly are too old and fragile to take on the road. I profiled them and now I have them in my Kemper ready to go anywhere in the world. When you combine that with all of the pro profile makers out there, guys like Michael Britt and Tone Junkies, people who have really nailed the profiling process, a lot of plosives in this sentence, you can have access to a wide variety of incredibly rare, incredibly expensive amps that you might not ever have the opportunity to play in the real world. But remember, a profile is essentially just a snapshot of that particular amp in that particular moment, how it was set up and how it was mic'd then. When you compare that to line six and the traditional modeling way of doing it, you might have less in the way of actual amp models, but they're way more flexible than just a standalone profile is. All right, so let's talk about some of the similarities and differences between the Kemper and the Helix as I see them. First of all, both units sound great. I mean, that's just how it is. They both sound good. Now, how you get there is completely different, but at the end of the day, both units are completely capable of sounding and responding and feeling like a real tube amp under your hands. That's just my experience. Both are great to use live. The Helix has snapshots, which are one of the greatest features I've ever used on any piece of gear. It allows you to assign almost any single detail or control of an amp sound or an effect to a foot switch that you can change instantly. You can turn effects on and off. You can change amp settings. You could change microphone and cabinet settings. It's really impressive. The Kemper's performance mode is no slouch either. You can get super detailed with different amp profile sounds and effects sounds that you can bank through with just a press of the foot switch. And the cool thing about the Kemper is you can completely switch amps in an instant. You can start a song on a vintage Blackface Deluxe and then switch to a Dumble for your rhythm sound and then a vintage Plexi for your lead sound and I mean, anything in between. Both have great looper functions for those who are into that kind of thing. I will say, I think the Kempers is easier to use and quicker to access if that's important to you. Both have really great comprehensive options for IO. They both have two stereo effects loops, which means you can patch in any number of stereo effects that are outboard and then control them via MIDI switching on the unit themselves. So if you're looking to integrate Either one of these with a pedal board or some effects that you already have, they'll work great for that. And it's kind of a small thing, but both have really good tuners. So what about the differences? There are some pretty big glaring differences between these two, and they might be deal breakers for some of you out there. 
The most glaring difference, and honestly, what I think was a big mistake for Kemper, was leaving out an integrated volume slash expression pedal. One of my favorite features about the Helix is having the pedal built in that you can instantly use for volume swells or as a wah pedal or assign it to a certain parameter on an effect and use it as an expression pedal. You can still do all that with the Kemper, but you have to buy an external expression pedal and you have to have a cable to connect the two. And that kind of goes back to the original problem with the Kemper, which was, it's not just the Kemper. You have to have all this extra stuff with it to use it to its full potential. Now, as a result, the Kemper stage is a little bit smaller and lighter than the Helix. If that's something that's important to you, it would probably fit on a pedal board easier. And the other major difference is in the workflow. And I think this is what will cause these two units to appeal to two different players. Starting with the Kemper, it's set up more like a traditional pedal board and amp rig. So if you're coming from that world, if you're a more traditional player, somebody that's used outboard effects and traditional tube amps their whole life, the Kemper is gonna feel more at home and it's gonna be an easier transition for you to make. The signal flow in the unit is very much like a traditional pedal board and amp setup. You have four effect slots that are pre-amplifier, then you have your amp profile and cabinet simulation, and then you have four effects that are post profile, like using an effects loop. Now you can get really detailed in how you have this setup working for you, but that's essentially what it is. It's a digital version of a pedal board and amp setup. The Helix, however, is completely different. It's really more like a piece of software wrapped up into a hardware controller package. You have blocks that you can assign to be different things, whether they be effects or amp models or cab sims. You can split your signal to do different things like parallel effects or run to amplifiers at one time. The upside being you have way more flexibility in what you can do inside the Helix than what you can in the Kemper. The downside being if you are that more traditional player, it's going to be harder for you to wrap your head around. And another big difference is Line 6 also offers editing software that you can use with the Helix to create presets, store presets, tweak presets and do a number of different things that you don't have with the Kemper. I've heard rumors that Kemper is developing an editing software, but at the time of recording this video, all they have is the rig manager software, which is just a way to store and file presets and profiles on your Kemper. And the other big glaring difference is in the effects. The Kemper effects, in my opinion, don't hold up to what Line 6 offers in the Helix. You have more options when it comes to things like overdrive and distortion and boost pedals. The modulation effects sound better. And you have more flexibility on how to use those effects inside the Helix than you do in the Kemper. The one area that I think Kemper has gotten close to Line 6 when it comes to effects is in the delays. But in my opinion, the rest of the effects don't hold a candle to the Helix. So which unit would I recommend and which unit would I buy? Like I was saying, if you are more of a traditional amp and pedal board player, I think the Kemper is gonna feel more at home to you. If you're looking to add something to your traditional rig, something that gives you some more flexibility, gives you the ability to run a digital rig with no stage volume or travel light to gigs or jam sessions, I think the Kemper is gonna be up your alley. The traditional layout and signal flow of the effects and amp profiles are going to feel more at home to you, as well as the performance mode, which works more like a traditional MIDI switcher on a pedal board would. However, if you're the type of player that likes flexibility, you like to tweak, you like to experiment with different layouts and different possibilities when it comes to your tone, the Helix is the thing for you. The wider variety of effects, the better quality of effects, and the more control you have over the signal flow and how you're using those effects in conjunction with the amp models means you're gonna have more time invested in tweaking to get your sounds right, but you're gonna have more flexibility and more possibilities of different sounds than you would on the Kemper. I would also recommend the Helix for somebody that's looking to replace their amp and pedal board setup with a digital solution that they're gonna use for just about everything. Having the flexibility of signal flow, the wider variety of effects, and the tweakability of the amp models, I think makes it a better option for people that want to go completely digital. So which one would I buy? 
This has actually been a really tough decision, and I went back and forth on this for days before making this video. But if it were my money and I could only buy one, I would go with the Helix. It's $100 less than the Kemper Stage. You get the integrated volume control and expression pedal. And personally, if I'm going to buy something like a modeler or a profiler, I want as much control and as much tweakability as possible to really dial in my sounds. Now, don't get me wrong. I've had a Kemper for years and I'm not getting rid of my Kemper. It's an amazing tool. It's really good at what it does. But when it comes to an all-in-one digital rig, I think the Helix has the slight advantage over the Kemper stage. Which one would you buy and which one do you prefer? Let me know in the comments section down below. If you enjoyed today's video, let me know by leaving a like and don't forget to subscribe and click the bell icon if you haven't done already. If you want to download either Either my Kemper profiles or my Helix presets. Those are all linked in the description box down below. Huge thanks to Line 6 and for Kemper for providing both of these units for free. I will have all of the information linked in the description box down below for those of you that want more information on both of these units. If you'd like to support the channel directly, consider buying a t-shirt, coffee mug, or joining the Green Room. We just launched the Green Room Forum over there. There's lesson of the week content. There's monthly challenges going up. It's a lot of fun. So that's all linked down below as well. Thanks so much for watching. I'm Rhett Shaw. Hope you enjoyed the video. And remember, there is no plan B.